The Sunday before Thanksgiving, something that I like to do that um, is something that I first was in contact with about 10 years ago, is having members of the congregation share their stories of gratitude. It is, um, it is a special time of bonding for this community. And, you know, as we go downstairs to have our Thanksgiving feast, um, I would also like everyone else to be able to say aloud to everyone gathered simply what they are grateful for today. But I've asked four people that I know have some extraordinary stories of gratitude to tell. And the first one that I have asked to speak today is someone whose story I have gotten to watch unfold fairly personally because I work with her every day. And that is our church manager, Ashley Holly. She, um, she has undergone a remarkable transformation in the time that I have known her. And she is someone in whom I have the highest respect and the deepest trust. So, Ashley, come on up here. <laughs> You can stand wherever you want to, honey. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. You Don't bet. Me too. Okay, well, thank you for already making me cry. Today, I am just on fire with gratitude. I have so many things in my life to be grateful for, and the first thing is my recovery. If I didn't have that... And if I didn't have my sobriety, I wouldn't have anything. I wouldn't be standing up here today. It has rebuilt relationships with people in my life that turned their back on me. Um, they're speaking to me again. Uh, my children, or my son, Jaden, even though he was a small child when I was deep into my addiction, he doesn't remember, but um, we were sort of you know, torn apart by that because of the um, absence while I was getting my life together. So now I just see um, he and I having such a beautiful, wonderful relationship. We're able to communicate, things like that. And uh, I have my 15-month-old, who I'm extremely grateful for, Wyatt. Um, and as I'm looking around now um, at everybody's faces, um, you all are the family that I chose and that has chosen me and I'm extremely grateful for that too because my family most of my parents are dead and most of my family doesn't speak to me still to this day so you don't know how much you guys unconditional love means to me and how grateful I am for that um, I don't know what else to say other than um I love you guys and uh <laughs> I love you guys, and I'm extremely grateful for the opportunity that Charles gave me by asking me to um, stand up here. Um, this is not my forte. I'm not, uh, you know, but I'm, I'm grateful that you sort of snuck that one in there. He, he asked me kind of sneakily while I was in the middle of a sentence, oh, yeah, hey, by the way, can you speak on Gratitude Sunday? I was like, sure, yeah. Wait a minute, what did you just say? <laughs> so anyway, um, but I'm really grateful, and I'm, I'm, I'm really grateful for you. Um, You've been like a dad to me. Um, you're the best boss ever. Um, I work in the best place ever. And um, so anyways, I'm, I'm really grateful for you for showing me unconditional love. You know, so anyway, that's all I have. I know that wasn't five minutes, but I could go on and on. Thank you. Thank you, Ashley. <clears throat> okay, I guess turnabout's fair play, huh? She can make me cry too. All right. So the next member of the congregation that um, I want to tell you a story uh, is Bo King. And um, Bo is someone that I didn't know well until we got into our first small group, which was kind of the small group before the small groups. And it was that group that convinced me that it was definitely something that we need to do in this church because of the relationship 
that I was able to form with Bo and his wife Ashley, um, with Christy, with um, Joan, with, you know, with, I mean, there were some people in that group that I had already worked with pretty closely, but there were also some people that, um, that I got to know and uh, got to be part of their lives. You know, since we were in that group, I got to officiate at, at Bo and Ashley's wedding, and um, I've seen him become a father. So it's, um, it's pretty neat. So a little bit about Bo. He was born in South Carolina, but grew up in Brazil and South Africa. He moved back to the States in 1998 when he started college. And he's been here at Unity for about two years and has been a member for one. So come on up, Bo. It doesn't look like nearly that many people when you're sitting out there in the crowd. (laughs) (laughs) Well, I was thinking about what I was going to talk about, you know, I was thinking, what are you thankful for? And there are a lot of things, you know. So I was like, well, I've got to narrow it down because I've only got five minutes. So some things were easy to weed out, you know, the, the little, I'm grateful for, I'm thankful for, Xbox, and I'm thankful for <laughs> toffee, you know. It's, it's easy enough to weed those out. It's, you know, and that left me with, well, what are you really thankful for? And I thought, well, I'm thankful for my wife, Ashley. And she's, she's been a, a, a big person in my life. Um, and since we've been together, she's, she's really pushed me to become a, a, a better and a bigger person, um, you know, both as a, as a husband um, and as a father later on, and you know, to can you continue pushing myself, not just become stagnant. Um, and sometimes that push necessarily turned into a shove, um, <laughs> which was good. But and so I thought, well, I'm thankful for Ashley. I'm also thankful for Michael, my son. Um, and Ashley was a big part of that. <laughs> <laughs> I reckon. <laughs> so I'm thankful for Ash. I'm thankful for Michael. Michael is brilliant. I love that kid. Even when you have a complete come apart at 2 o'clock in the morning, that's fantastic. It's great. You know, and, and I love him, and, and I'm so glad he's in my life. And I started thinking, well, so there's those two. I'm very glad for them. But I also had a... a medical incident that put me in the hospital not that long ago, about September, I think it was. And I had so many people come forward for me. Um, I actually was there the whole time. And you know, my cousins and siblings and aunts and uncles and everything. And, I, and then you guys too. You know, um, Terry was there and, and Deborah was there and... Um, it, it really gave me a chance to see how many people really cared about what happened to me. Because I was just sitting in that room, and, just, and all these people just kept showing up. And I was like, that's great. And, and I'm probably leaving out more people that showed up because I was kind of out of it. I don't remember the whole thing. But, um, and that's when it kind of struck me. What I was really thankful for is family. That is the big deal, you know. It's my wife, my son, you know, my, my own siblings and everything. And it's all you guys, too. It is. There were, I haven't grown up overseas. There were so many times when I heard, well, you're not one of us. Well, okay, no, I don't have your accent. I'm sorry. When I got back here, my accent had changed enough where I still heard, you're not really one of us. I was like, I'm not one of anybody. That's brilliant. <laughs> I've been one of you guys since I stepped in here. Mm-hmm. And I thank you for it. Mm-hmm. And I thank you, Ashley. Mm-hmm. Thanks, Bo. Thank you. You are one of us. Okay. <clears throat> 
So the next person that I'm going to bring up and have speak with you is Leah Blaine. And Leah has been attending Unity Churches for about the past 15 years. And she's been coming here since uh, 2013, which is when, uh, when I arrived here. And she says she's found Unity of Birmingham to be truly a home for her family. It has held us together and helped us learn how to love each other in spite of and for our differences. So Leah, why don't you come on up? Um, I just want to say thank you to Reverend Charles for um, asking me to come up here and do this when he first asked me. I was really humbled that he did that, um, much like Bob, I've never really felt like um, I really belonged anywhere before, like ever. So for him to ask me that was just, just humbling and it, it filled me with just so much happiness. But then like right literally after like this fear set in, because I was like, why is he asking me to come stand up here and talk in front of people? That's crazy. Um, <laughs> so, so I was like terrified. And I was like, okay, what am I going to say I'm thankful for? Um, I didn't want to be cliche. I mean, yes, I'm thankful for my husband. I love him. He's awesome. My kids are cool too, you know. Um, I, I just, I, I, I didn't know. And literally, and that's why I have this piece of paper here, all the way up until last night, I was like, I don't know what I'm going to say. So at midnight, I was like, get it together, girl. All right. <laughs> We're going to do this. Um, so bear with me. Um, so we've had a, a, a hard year, my family and I, or at least in my mind. Um, that's how it seemed. And I didn't, like I said, I didn't want to come up here and, and seem cliche gushing about like all of our bright and sunny days. But then I thought about it, and honestly on a great day. I'm so grateful. I have um, these beautiful souls being my family to make it through these great days with. So, And I thought about each of their faces, my husband and my kids, and it took me to a place of sincere appreciation. Um, my mother, who was an immigrant from a third world country, she worked in sweatshops. And in my opinion, she's, um, I've never, I don't have any memories of her being a happy person, of enjoying her life, of coming home and being able to sit down and relax and have a good day. Um, I don't have any of those kind of childhood memories. Um, and I just thought she'd be like amazed at all the abundance in my life. And I'm not talking about things. Um, she'd just be amazed that I, I, I find days to be happy and I find days to be content with or without things. Like. I, I don't think it ever occurred to her that she could have that. Um, and even though she lived a hard life until the day that she died, I'm grateful that her life example could help lead me towards um, an appreciation that I was always afraid would never happen. Um, and so sometimes you start to feel like your life is so meager, especially on you, when you focus what you don't have and you miss all that you do have. And then that's when I realized that even my hardships with this tough financial year, tough financial year was a blessing. It showed me that um, it showed me what I don't want to do, and what I don't want to focus on. It made me look into my soul for the answers to um, feeling fulfilled, feeling contentment and peace. I'm not gonna lie in church <laughs> and say that I typically feel content or at peace, or because um, I'm a walking storm, and I know that. <laughs> I just am, you know, you know, I don't even know what I'm going to do from day to day. So, um, but I strive for calm waters and every life lesson is, is leading me there and giving love the gift that keeps on giving has made me a stronger and wiser person. Loving my family and seeing the blessings in all of our experiences is humbling me more and more each day. I always say that I feel like I grew up with my children because um, I had them when I was 21 and I was young and I was just a grown child. And um, we grew up together, we raised each other. 
and that's why they're so unique and different and um and just perfect and beautiful um the universe is our guide and our parent and for their love and company through all the trials and tribulations and even for the trials and tribulations especially for the lessons learned through the trials and tribulations i'm so grateful for all that that i've learned peace Thank you. Thanks, Okay, so our last speaker is someone that may not be tremendously familiar to all of you. He, um, he's fairly new to our congregation, but he's not new to Unity and he's not new to me. Um, ten years ago today, roughly, ten years ago this Sunday, he and I both did this exact same thing. Um, at Christ Church Unity in Orlando, Florida, Reverend Gene Lynch had invited four of us, and, and Brendan and I were two of the four people that he asked to share our stories. It was the first time that I actually ever gave you know, part of a talk at a Unity church. Um, and it was also the first time that I ever admitted in public that I'm an alcoholic. So it was um, a fairly important day for me. Brendan's story... Um, was I, I'm thankful I didn't have to follow it. But you know, the interesting thing about our lives is we've both had more since then. We've had um, more challenges, and we have so much more to be grateful for today. So I am really deeply pleased to be able to bring Brendan Price up here. So... <clears throat> You've had 10 years to practice. <laughs> Thank you. Good morning. Good morning. My name is Brendan Price. I'm uh, more commonly known as BP uh, around town. And um, the thing I'm grateful for today is the concept of surrender. Um, I was introduced to the, the concept of surrender back in 1995 when I, too, uh, gained sobriety. Um, Ninety days after I was sober, I was diagnosed with stage four non-Hodgkin's lymphoma, and I was told that it was an incurable disease. And uh, my first sponsor, <clears throat> when I called and told him about the horrific news, he chuckled, and I thought, what the hell is so funny, you know? And he goes, well, now you have two incurable diseases to deal with. And uh, we're going we're gonna to use the same concepts to take care of both. Um, so there's um, a prayer. It's called the third step prayer. And it goes something like this. God, I offer myself to thee to build with me and to do with me as thou wilt. Relieve me of the bondage of self that I may better do thy will. Take away my difficulties that victory over them may bear witness to those I would help of thy power, thy love, and thy way of life. May I do thy will always. And I learned that and memorized that early on. And that was, the day I did that with my sponsor was the day before I was diagnosed, you know. And I kept questioning, you know, why, why did I learn this prayer? What does it mean? Big deal. Okay, I'm on to the next one, the next step. And then I got the diagnosis. And then it really hit home. And I really started to look at that prayer and to see what it meant. My plan was to stock up on enough booze and drugs that I would never have to look back. I didn't want to have to deal with treatment. I had just watched my mother die from cancer, and so I was just filled with fear. And my sponsor called me out on it, and he said, if you want to survive this thing, you're going to need every ounce of energy that you have to make this. Um, so you need to make a decision. And he goes, call me when you make a decision. So I went home, and I thought about it. And I decided that I was going to try to survive it. That was 1995. Um, and I'm, <clears throat> thanks. <clears throat> so what happened um, was I decided to go ahead and go through with it, and I went through this chemotherapy reg regimen. I was also doing some non-traditional treatments, some, some new age treatments, and a variety of things. Um, but one morning, I was laying on the floor in my living room in Houston, 
and I was not feeling well at all, and I had some very strange and bizarre uh, uh, physical sensations. And I closed my eyes, and I just started to pray, and um, I had this vision. There's, there's these words in the big book uh, of, of AA, and it says, someday we'll, we will cease fighting everything and everyone. And I said, that has to be impossible because, you know, um, I'm going to have to fight this, I'm going to have to fight that, I'm going to have to fight this, there's this, there's this. And I had this vision where I was in a ca canoe, and I was going upstream in a mountain stream, and I was paddling as hard as I could, as hard as I could, as hard as I could, and I knew if I stopped that I was going to die. I just knew it in this vision. And I got to the point where I hit extreme exhaustion, and, and I had to just put the paddle down and laid back in the canoe. And the canoe turned around and whew, just took the rapids down nice and easy, and I realized I didn't die, mm -hmm. you know? And it was at that point that I started to understand the concept of surrender in my life was that I could use the, the energy and the power of fighting to heal. And so I decided at that point I was no longer going to fight cancer or have a battle with cancer, that I was going to use that energy to heal. And at this point, when I talk about this, I always, I always have to honor the people that went before us and didn't make it, because I really don't know why I made it, and some people didn't, you know. Um, I had five good years of health, and... Five years and two weeks, I was re-diagnosed. I'd have a, re a relapse with the cancer came back, and um, they had approved me to go to Houston to have a, a bone marrow transplant. And I was just wrought with fear. There was a, a very good friend of mine, his name's Brian Babcock, and he was a fairly famous gymnast. He, he was a national champion, the number one gymnast in the United States of America in 1985. We were college teammates together, and uh, he was this incredible physical specimen he was uh, super smart. He was famous. And uh, a year before I went for the transplant, he had gone through a transplant at the same facility, MD Anderson in Houston, and he didn't make it. Um, so I adopted this belief that if Brian didn't make it, there's no way I could make it. And so I was just overcome with fear. And, and as a lot of us know, that fear stands for false experiences uh, appearing real right? Face everything and recover, or F everything and run, which is, <laughs> which is also what I'm good at. <clears throat> and, uh, sorry, Charles. It's all and, good. And, uh, the day before I left Orlando to go to Houston, I was walking across the parking lot at Disney, magical, and um, I, had this, I had this awareness that I just wasn't going to make it, and that I was going to die. And um, I thought of Brian, and I thought of some things, and I stopped, and I just made a connection with Brian, the, with the unseen. And, um, and when I did that, and I let go of some things, I let go of some things, some of the fear, and I heard his voice say, um, I'm going to guide you through this transplant, Brendan. And just like you're hearing me, it was amazing. Um, and so I went with that, and that set into course just a bunch of, coincidental things, and we know there are no coincidences. We're, we're, we live in the infinite realm of possibility of the spirit. There are no coincidences, and that's what happened. Um, anyway, I've survived it, uh, and I'm grateful for that. But more than being grateful for surviving, I'm grateful to, for the concept of understanding surrender and being able to live from that place. And I forget. I have the built-in forgetter, like a lot of us do. And... Uh, um, yeah, I'm grateful to be reminded of it. So when I have people in my lives like you guys, like people in recovery, people that practice the unity uh, principles, when I forget, I'm gently and lovingly reminded. Sometimes not so lovingly, but that's okay too. Um, thank you. That's all I have. Thank you. Hmm. Thanks, brother.